Today's podcast is supported by David Smith of Edward Jones. Are you happy with your financial strategy? Or maybe you'd like to see what other opportunities are out there. Or give David a call at 469-372-1587. That's 469-372-1587. David is only concerned about one person. That's you and your financial health. So check him out. David Smith, Edward Jones, 469-372-1587. Hey everybody, it's The Trout and welcome to The Trout Show. So happy you're here. If you're new to the channel, what I do is I interview independent and very well-known musicians that are located all over this wonderful planet of ours. So thanks for listening. See if you've heard this one before. You got a guy that says, I want to be a a well-known musician. He lives in a small town in Nebraska. When I say small, less than 100 people. He goes to town folks and say, I want to make it big. So what does the town do? They have bake sales, rummage sales, garage sales, all sorts of sales. Anyway, they got him enough money that they gave him $2,500, handed it over to him, and this 20-year-old person jumped in their vehicle and drove to Nashville. And then you know what happened? Yeah, you got it. They became a successful singer, songwriter, and performer. That's Lucas Hogue. That's the person I'm interviewing today, and I think you're going to enjoy his story as he talks about how his town helped him and how he worked diligently every night with two jobs, working during the day, singing at night, to be the successful performer he is now. What's also interesting, Lucas also has his own TV show. So sit back and enjoy this episode. Small Town Kid Makes Big Town Success in Nashville. That's Lucas Holt, and that's next on The Trout Show. That time for a sunset cruise, a little town skyline up in my rear view. I'm free tonight, baby. How about you? You wanna crank it up? And we can slow it down, or we can disappear. Just say the word and we can get out of here. And go take a little ride down a countryside drive, take a spin and have a mind, put it under these skies. Make a little dust, we ain't got nowhere to go. Making all like change, taking every turn so weird. Don't it feel like we got heaven in the headlights? This is one of them nights. Makes you wanna take a take a little ride down countryside. Drive. I just wanna take a ride down countryside. Drive. There's three things I really liked about you, and and funny, none of them are about music, which is kind of interesting. I love your music, but here's the thing. Number one is the town of, what is there, like 60 people in Hubble, Nebraska? There's eight people now. It was 44 when I was there. <laughs> okay. So, so anyway, they got money together, according to the stuff I read, and I want you to verify it. They got enough money for you. Where did they send you? You were singing around town. and. Yeah. And, you know, I grew up there, obviously, but me and my dad and my brother were always singing around and volunteering for anything that they needed to do, you know, charity events, whatever. You know, we got volunteer of the year awards, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. After graduation, I was just like, you know, I'm going to give this thing a shot. If I ever have a time, it's now. And, you know, I don't want to, you know, sit back and wonder if and what if and all that stuff. I just want to do it. And uh, so I was all the friends of mine that, you know, we used to do some singing around with and my old band back there, we got together, we did kind of like a, a mini Opry, you know, at our local little gymnasium theater. <laughs> yeah, our, yeah. And said, hey, this is going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm going to Nashville, I want everybody to come, we're going to have a big party before I leave. And we opened up Free Will Donation, and uh, just opened up the doors, and we all just played songs and sang all night long, and, and packed this like 400 seat auditorium, you know, which was really, really cool. And a lot of the, like the women's club and all the, the club,
clubs like that and the ladies' bazaars and they baked goods and sold the good, the, the cookies and the kolaches and all that stuff. Wow. Like, like made quilts and the, they painted paintings and they auctioned them off and they donated all that money to me to get my butt to Nashville. I think I left out of there with a free will donation and all that stuff, about $2,500. Wow. Packed up my truck and moved to Nashville, didn't know a soul, and just started doing it. So were you, how old were you at the time? I was 20 at the time. So you were out of high school. Yeah. Yeah, you graduated high school. High school. And I uh, went to a, a trade school to get my degree in uh, construction business, mm -hmm. architecture, and that kind of thing, just in case. <laughs> I always had something to fall back on. Something to pay the bills until the music took off. Right. right. And uh, moved straight down there right after that. You know, I had three bands going at one time. I had a, a worship band called Extreme Devotion that uh, we were leading worship on the UNL campus while I was going to college at Milford, Nebraska. I know where that is. And I had a rock band called uh, Southern Cross, rock and country. It was anything goes. Yeah. And then I had a country band called uh, Borderline all going at one time. So I was singing, you know, from Wednesday to Sunday, whenever, you know, I'd get out of school or get out of work. Yeah. You're in Nashville and you got all these little bands. When, when was that? That was one of the reasons I like you. I'll get to the other two in a second, but I want to go on with this. You're paying your dues, which a lot of people don't understand that. Chapel Heart's a prime example. They've been singing for like 20, whatever the time is. And then they get discovered and people think, oh, you're an overnight sensation. Exactly. So from the time that you got there until the time that you got really traction, how long was it? Man, that's a good question. It's probably at least seven, eight years after I got to Nashville. You know, I mean, I, I got to Nashville and I decided, I mean, I went some, I, I think I was at a boot store at the mall or something like that. And the guy goes, man, you come here for music? I said, yes, sir. And he's like, so did everybody else. <laughs> He wasn't trying to be like pessimistic, but he said, you know, about 3,000 people a month move to Nashville and about at, at the end of every month, about 98% of those people quit, give up, go home. He's like, if you really want it, you need to stay here and figure out how to make Nashville a home first. I'm like, man, that's great advice. And I, that, you know, I went out and got a great job, something that was going to pay the bills because I knew the music wasn't going to do it for a long time and uh, worked my butt off during the day. And I get up about 5.30 every morning, worked all day at a construction site, got home at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, got a 30-minute shower, and went down and played all the bars and riders' nights I could possibly find. So probably about midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, and do it all over again every single day for about three years until I was able to kind of cut back on, you know, having to cut my teeth at those honky tonks. <laughs> and that'll educate you fast, you know, about crowds and people and how to work those things like that. So were you writing at the time too? Were you writing your own material? Or were you just doing Absolutely. Okay. Right with give me a, the time of day and and uh, just trying to do whatever I could to get into the industry in any way, shape or form. Meeting everybody, don't take no for an answer, those kinds of things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like the fact that you have uh spent some time overseas yeah. entertaining the troops which is, that to me is, is a really cool thing to do. If I had the opportunity, I would, but I'm, you know, I'm not a star. So, I mean, but how, did you just, did someone come to you and say, hey, would you mind going on a tour or, or did you decide to do it on your own? So, yeah, um, it's, it's probably been about 15 years ago. I've done 13 years of consecutive tours overseas and each one is about two weeks in length. <clears throat> and the first one was quite a while back. And there was a private contractor who was sending over talent, right? Uh, they were like, hey, we're going to do the big you know, stage and lights, and you go just perform and you just blow it out, get show them a good time. I'm like, okay, let's do it, you know? And we, over there, it was just that. But we didn't get to spend a lot of one on one time because we were, I mean, we were going from one place. To, yeah. You do a show, get done, the grip and rip and leave. Yeah. Grip and rip and leave. It wasn't that one on one time that I was hoping for. Right. To sit down. And literally, I landed after getting back from that first tour, which was a 30-day tour to Iraq, Kuwait, Kosovo. And, man, it was a whirlwind tour for sure. And it was a long time to be overseas in those areas. And as soon as we landed, it was CMA Fest. And I was scheduled to do, like, this celebrity shootout or something like that where we were 
it was me and Craig Morgan and Tyler Parr and I don't, there was a bunch of us anyway doing right. a bunch of stuff for CMA Fest and the guy that was hosting it his name was Robbie Powers and he owned a nonprofit called American 300 and he had just started this other thing called uh, Wrangler National Patriot which a good friend of mine flash forward Ch- Jeff Chadwick from the Wrangler Corporation decided to start this thing and they partnered up before you know a year the same time that I was overseas and okay. I got there, he's like and I heard you just got home from overseas. He's like, how about you go back with me at Memorial Day? I, said, I, I would love to, but what's the tour going to be like? Because I don't want to just go over there and just play music and, you know, grip and rip and run. Yeah, you want to press some flesh and meet the people. Sure. Exactly. I say thank you. Look these people in the eye. Yeah. Really, you know, whatever. Let them tell me how their day's going, that thing. And he's like, that's exactly what we're going to do. He's like, we're going to put you, the guitar, and a black hawk and some rodeo cowgirls and cowboys, and we're just going to go meet people. And you'll play for a little bit, and you'll play around campfires or in defects and motor pool, wherever. You're not going to do a big show. I mean, we might set up one night and do a show at the end of the tour or something like that. Well, what I'd like to do. Man, we were doing that 13 years in a row, and I loved every second of it. And, uh, yeah, so it's it's been pretty cool. Well, do some crazy- all they had to say to me was Blackhawk, and where's my guitar? I'm going. <laughs> When did you get involved with? Is that same the same offshoot of people that you're involved with the PTSD? The uh, there was a nonprofit you were involved with. I know a few years back that had to do with. Uh, they're they're based out of close. They're out by uh, Colleen. They're north of Colleen, I think, or down that area in Texas. Guardian Angel for Soldiers Pet, which is really cool. So when you see those reunite, they reunite the pets with the, the troops that come home. It was that thing. So we were. It's an organization that helps find foster homes for those animals, and um, because a lot of times people have to surrender them if they don't have anybody to take care of them, and they'll put the dog or the cat down. The organization stepped up, and they're like, "We're going to find people to take care of these animals until you get home." So, so that's the last thing on your mind. Know that they're taken care of, which is really cool one, and uh, I love being a part of that because I had an Animal Planet TV show years ago when I first moved to Nashville, where I was the senior songwriter helping rep. 180 dogs every single week and finding a new home. So wow. The so when they told me that they needed somebody to help them out, I was taught to oh, yeah. talk about the military and pets and, and anything that can help them keep their mind off of worrying about that. I mean, that's, that's a small thing. Yeah. Are they, are they still doing their thing? Are they still together? I think they are. I haven't heard, you know, a whole lot, a lot of things kind of dropped off during the COVID. Yeah. Break. So that's we're all just kind of trying to get back to it. That's the three things I really liked about you. Okay, you you like dogs. You like dogs. That's it. Who cares about your singing career? I mean, seriously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, who cares? And then, and of course, then the interesting thing about it is you have this Canadian. Is it a Canadian based? Or you were doing a Canadian ho- hog wild up there. Are you still shooting that, or you did, did that for a while, or what? No. So my I'm, that's why I'm down here. Ah, for the show. We're filming season four right now for Hogue Wild. Okay. But season three is airing right now in Canada. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun, man. We're, we're doing some amazing stuff for season four. Uh, seasons one, two, and three were awesome, but this year's going to be incredible. We're going back to Costa Rica, Belize. I'm starting a music festival down in Belize because I fell in love with it down there so much that uh, uh, trying to buy a property and start a music festival so that I have a reason to go every a few months. Well, don't you don't you dive too? Yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of scuba diving down there. Oh, most beautiful crystal clear gin water. So, how many episodes do you shoot for your your show? I'll do ten to thirteen episodes for a season. So that's we're about that's about six months. Where I guess it's like the yeah quarters worth. Now we're doing uh, three three quarters worth. So we're probably going to do anywhere from uh, fifteen to twenty episodes, and then we're going to do start over in Q two and re-air all the way through and then start back in Canada as well. So we're essentially year-round, year and a half around. It's it's just some production coming out of Canada that said, hey, come up and do this? Or did you have people in the biz that said, or you had a concept? I own everything. I created everything. Well, that's your whole show. Oh, wow. That's cool. Company. Uh, I I hire out the editing. My One of my dear friends is my camera guy. I've known him for 15 years probably when he was – 
being uh, sponsored by the same archery company I was. It was me and Josh Stewart. You remember the actor Josh Stewart? Yeah. After he's been in like everything, you'd see his face and be like, oh yeah, I know that guy. We're all in the same archery um, company together for a long time, along with low cash. And <clears throat> I sought out this one dude who was sitting across from me like, you don't look like like you're like in the music business or in the film business. He's like, no man, I'm just a, a hunter. I'm like, that's awesome. Of course, I'm like, what else do you do? You know, how do you pay the bills? He's like, well, I'm a camera guy too. I'm like, there it is right there. Yeah. And became quick friends and finally when this show took off, I was like, man, I, I need I need that go-to guy that I want to keep that consistency so the show looks consistent, you know, and, and he's my guy, man. He's a hard, hard worker. He'll work, you know, an hour before we all get up and two or three hours before we all go, after we all go to sleep, just gathering content, filing, you know, organizing, and just, just a badass. It really is badass. You know, I, I was impressed before, but I'm really impressed by you now because you're not just a musician, you're, a, you're an entrepreneur. When I have a new artist, I say, do you understand how the music business works? It's the business of music. You know, it's not the music business, it's the business of music. And you, you have to understand that. And, I, and, and you know this as well as I do. You, what's unique about you is you have the ability, you're smart enough, and you have the creativity to figure out, I can do this, I got to do everything. In other words, not everybody has that capability. A lot of people say, I just want to put me in a studio, I want to stand in front of the microphone and write song. I don't want to know what I don't want to know how to run the board. I don't want to produce. Just do that. But you've taken, but you've taken it there. Do you taken it further than that? And and that that's very smart. I mean, I I you know to sit there and go that way, and and it's interesting to me because when I was a kid and one you know I wanted to make it big and do all this stuff, but it was the old back then it was like you know get famous or get known in your town, get bigger, maybe do the country, I mean, the country fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're lucky, somebody from, you know, A&R would show up and go, say, hey, boy, you want to sell your life away? And then you go on recording and they throw it up on a shelf and go, sorry, we didn't like it. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> but now, and, and that's one of the things I always talk to people about is you st people still want the big label support. But on the other hand, like you, you're doing fine. You know, there's no reason and this is what I tell younger artists. There's no, you, you know, I want to win a Grammy. I want to make a zillion dollars. Well, just how about just playing your music and get paid enough to make it work? Exactly. But I've, I've been saying this since I moved to Nashville. I never had dreams of like being Garth Brooks. I love Garth Brooks. I love George Strait. I love them all. Yeah. And I love their careers. But it's like I always came to Nashville wanting a career. Don't make me a, I don't. I don't care if I'm a star. I don't care if I'm a celebrity. I want a career that'll last until I die. So, yeah. Know, I'm here the yeah. That was my, you know, to be able to make music, be in the entertainment business, and make enough and pave my own way to where I can survive, have a great life, take me around the world, and it's done exactly that, you know, and. I've never wanted that gigantic stardom of holy cow, it's where you can't go outside and have dinner. You know? No, that, you know. And I've never wanted that. I've always wanted that long lasting career that can sustain me until I die, you know, and do, doing what I'd love to do. So on stage, do you play acoustic most of the time or do you play electric at all? I hardly ever play electric. I'll play a resonator, but it's mainly. Acoustic. Oh, you do? Okay. So what's your favorite? guitar that you play well my favorite guitar that i have is the 410 taylor limited edition that i <laughs> that was my guitar that i fell in love with when i first moved to nashville uh, there was an old used music store that <clears throat> i would go into every week and make sure that it was still there <laughs> this guitar it breathed a different era of like i was playing an old type of me yeah nothing wrong with that no but if I felt like playing a two by four with strings on it compared to the Taylor that I would pick up. And right. I love Taylor. And I picked up this guitar every single week and I play this thing and I would like hide it behind all the other guitars. <laughs> so they like, couldn't find it. Them so that nobody would see it or hopefully they wouldn't see it. You know? and it was probably two months later. I was literally playing that guitar and my mom called me on my cell phone. And she's like, if you're in that guitar shop or, you know, and we, we're, we are poor as could, poor could be. You know, mom and dad always knew we, we always had enough, but we 
we never had plenty. She said, I'm going to get a credit card. You're going to buy that guitar, and you're going to pay me every month. I'm like, are you serious? Oh, my God. She's like, if it's, the, if it's there next week, you go get that thing. And I took that credit card. I bought that guitar, $2,500, the most expensive thing I've ever bought in my entire life. And I paid that thing off probably, I don't know how long it took me to pay that thing off. Mm. She cut the credit card out, and I still play that thing today. Every every show, I still play that. That's your baby. That's your baby. I mean, it's got the old Willie and Waylon holes in it from the pick going back and forth. Hell out of that thing, and I play it hard. And then flash forward to me loving Taylor. I'm a, I'm an endorsed Taylor guitar artist. I would hope so. I've, I've got so many amazing Taylor guitars that I love. And my buddy Tim Godwin you know, would call me, and we'd go to NAMM together. He's like, what's your favorite guitar? He's like, you've done so many you know, posts for us and stuff. Can we send you some money? I'm like, I don't want your money. <laughs> send me a guitar. I, I want the K26 CE Luthier Edition, blah, 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 this, that, gold, this. And he goes, okay, way by the mailbox. Like three days later, this guitar shows up. Wow. And all Koa front and back and just like my dream guitar, right? I'll never have to buy another guitar in my entire life. And when I got that, I was like about in tears. I loved it so much, but it still doesn't top that guitar that I hid in a, the old used music store for probably six months until I could figure out how to buy it. So, so you're going to go on tour and then that lasts for months, doesn't it? I mean, you're doing a lot of dates. Yeah, I'll be uh, done. The last the end of April is my last. Uh, well, it's thing. not too bad. Yeah, and then I start my festival May 17th to the 21st in Belize, and then that's when I start filming for <clears throat> the rest of this, this season for my show, my TV series, Oh Wild. So we're going to be, like I said, we're going to be in Spain, we're going to be in Istanbul, Turkey, New Zealand, wow. Canada, Puerto Rico, uh, Puerto Vallarta, we're going to be in Mexico, and all over the you know central United States as well. So. <laughs> I admire what you're doing, and I'm sure a lot of people would find out about you if they knew everything about what you do. They probably admire you as much as I do for everything that you do. And, and I think what you do is just really tremendously great. And I, and I don't blow smoke up at people because I don't need to. Uh, but, you know, the music is great. The TV show, which I will watch because I have Dish, so it's on Dish. I know. I did check it out. I do check it out. I'm going to have to record it. Now that I've seen you, I'm going to have to, I've got to watch the show now. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> and, and so the single comes out on the 20th, and, and then after that, you go on tour, and then uh, do you, last, just kind of a last question, do you take a tape, do you record on the way and just kind of get ideas and start strumming and go, oh, i got an idea for a new song, or does that come to you like that or not? Yeah, absolutely. You know, my phone is clear full of ideas and, you know, I'll send them off to my, kind of, I call it my board of advisors or board of directors or whatever you want to trust and be like, Hey, I really want to call space <clears throat> this idea, hold it for me. And I'll send it to this buddy of mine. And I'll be like, I want to do this idea, you know, think on it and hold this one for me and put my name on it. Cause it will come back in a few weeks and you know, when I'm off the road and we'll, we'll crack down on it.
Well, that's it for this episode of the Trout Show podcast. Thanks for listening. I'd like to thank my guest, Lucas Hogue, for coming on and talking with me and telling about his musical career. If you'd like to know more about Lucas, you can check out his website at lucashogue, and that's H-O-G-E dot com, lucashogue.com, or check out his TV show, Hogue Wild, and that's H-O-G-E-W-I-L-D dot com. Check it out. See where you can see it. It's a great show. I think you'll enjoy it. So until next time, people, remember what I always say. It's only rock and roll, but I love it. See ya.